Hello, welcome to Boomstick Gaming, this is Alex, and today I want to talk about Neo 2. To be more specific, I'm going to be breaking down the brand new Soul Core system that adds a little bit of gotta catch them all into Neo. These allow for much more flexibility with your character build, while also adding more depth into the already impressively deep combat system. Now it's time to go on a little yokai watch, couldn't help myself on that one, and dive into the nuanced mechanics of Soul Cores and Neo 2. There are various new things in Neo 2, like the Switchglaive weapon for one example which I will be using for the majority of this, along with the new risk reward element of the burst counter, but the one thing that has really got my attention the most is the new Soul Core system. Most all enemies now have a chance to drop their own cores, even bosses, which often house a new activatable skill for you to use, which are powered by the anima resource that is under your health and key gauges. These have their own independent stats that act as expanded gear for your character, which also dictates how powerful your guardian spirit form is. These soul cores don't seem to scale with your own stats, but have a leveling system all to themselves, which makes these viable for every type of character build. These can be really powerful tools if used at the right time during combat, but some of the longer attack animations do leave you open for damage while they're active, adding some risk to firing these off. Also new to Neo 2, the right trigger now acts as your Yokai modifier button, allowing you to use your Soul Core skills mapped to the face buttons, as well as activate your burst counter. The combat system in Neo 1 was already pretty deep, and although these new skills add even more onto that foundation, they were smartly implemented in a way that has them feel natural to pull off during a fight without the control scheme getting too convoluted. The Soul Core's abilities directly correlate to the attack style of the yokai you claimed it from, which can fundamentally change the flow of combat if you use them often. When you gather up some of these soul cores out in the wild, you will need to make your way back to a shrine to actually claim them, and in standard souls-like fashion, if you happen to die and don't make it back to your corpse, these will be lost along with your gained Amrita. If you happen to find a low-level enemy's core where you really like their ability, duplicate higher-level cores can be found from the same enemy type, and you can also boost up their experience by feeding higher-level cores lower-level duplicates. Overall, the new Soul Core system is my number one favorite addition to Neo, and I'm really glad that every type of build now gets some fun activatable skills to play around with, even for people who don't want to pump points into ninjutsu or into magic. That was a somewhat simplified overview of the Soul Core system, and I will be digging much deeper into Neo 2 in the coming weeks, so consider subscribing to the channel to stick around for those future videos. You can also find me over on Twitter at BoomstickAlex, where I may or may not be quite as helpful as I try to be over here on YouTube. Lastly, a big shout out to the top supporting YouTube members and patrons you're seeing on screen, who help to keep this individually owned and operated channel fully functioning. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.